Hi, thanks for joining me on the video. Um, I have a quick mini haul and then I'm going to do some shipping today. So as you know, I live um, in a very small town and um, it's really hit or miss. Sometimes I go down there and they've stocked it and there's a ton of stuff. And most of the time, though, it is all volunteers. Um, and I went the other day, I don't know if I ever told you this, but I went the other day to take some toys and these thankfully were brand new and wrapped, but they still aren't taking toys just because of COVID. They just feel like kids chew on them. And, and so, you know, that's kind of where we're at as far as like, they turn away just a ton of donations and that's fine. You know, it's, um, it is, uh, you know, uh, an organization and they do give a lot to the community. So whatever they want to do, um, it just always makes, um, myself and a few other friends of mine who resell, we just want like a thrift store. That's just like the Goodwill where just stuff's coming in, you know, um, that's what we're looking for. But, um, you know, we just drive to get it. So it's okay. Um, but I do occasionally when I go in, um, sorry, I thought I heard my dog or something, but anyway, I do, um, when I go in, I do find things. So anyway, yesterday I spent $9.48. $5 is the coat I'm going to show you. $3 are the jeans. And they always charge a dollar for um, using your credit card. So I just, I don't want to write them a business check, but I also want it to come out of my business. So I just pay the buck, whatever. Um, these are my first um, pair of wedgies ever, Levi's wedgies. I it's a new to me thing, like in the last probably three or four months. And then I've been kind of looking for them, not actively, but just kind of, and there they were. So, um, these are a size 26. They're pretty small. It has like a small, um, uh, pull in the denim. So it's one of those catch 22s. Do you cut that off or do you leave it? So I don't know. I'll probably just mention it. It's got the frayed hem. That's purposeful. So anyway, I'm thinking I looked up the size 26. They are small. I'm thinking maybe just 20 bucks, but it's, it's just a reminder to pick them up. So I wanted to get them, get them in my store, see how they perform. Um, I've seen wedgies in like, you know, plus size and those would be what I'm really hoping to get. <laughs> by the way, yesterday I went and I forgot my phone. It's like my number one tool. You know, I do, I've gotten lazy. I, yes, I do know a lot from reselling for over 25 years, but you know, I still use my phone. I just, I rely on it. I look things up. I try to make sure I have a hundred percent sell through rate. And, um, so I just, I left and it's only a mile up and I could have come back, but I just decided not to. I just did my best without my phone. So anyway, I saw this coat um, it's called G S O U snow. So Sue snow. I don't know if that's, I, I don't know how you say it. Honestly, Gasso snow. I have no idea. Um, but anyway, I, uh, saw this and it was just really pretty and they do charge a lot for stuff. So I just took it up there and I asked, I wasn't sure if it was like $10, $20. There were no tags on it. Usually if something's over, 10 bucks they put a tag on it so this is just really really cute it's a size medium um here's the tag if you're looking uh it i saw some listings that had the 10k in there so that's a thing and so it is a size medium it's a smaller size but again i'm kind of snowed in right now i don't know i'm hoping to get out of here by thursday or friday but it's a blizzard out there um the roads are technically open but they're bad i mean i'm uh, gonna have to go scrape my car off a third time i got up and went to work out at the class that i take at 5 45 so my my husband scraped it then then when I came out from the class like 35 minutes later I had to you know I had snow all over my windshield and then now I'm going to the post office about three hours later and it's another you know bunch I'm gonna have to scrape off <coughs> so anyway these do seem to have a really good sell through so thankfully I was taking a chance I thought you know I could consign it once they told me it was five bucks I thought you know, this is a really cute ski jacket. I could get my five bucks back by consigning it. But thankfully, I think it's going to go on eBay. So I'm going to put that there. All right, let's start shipping. Let's hope it was better than um, the other day where eBay was having problems. I think it is. Let me get up here. <coughs> Excuse me. I tried doing this video once. I was coughing so much. We'll just hope I'm I'm doing a lot better right now. We'll hope I am. All right.
So let me first check and make sure I don't have anything to print off for my son. I don't believe I do. Or any consignment. I have a couple other real small consignment people. Um, yeah, actually this is this sheet set. So let me just... Um, well, I'll wait and do it last so that I don't print off the wrong sheet. So anyway, all right, this is a hat. This is mine. It's a Batman Bio World uh, merchant hat, Nightwing, men's one size, and it's like a snapback. So um, I've had this, let's see, this is number 3749. I haven't had this more than like a couple months at the very most. And um, they used my 28% off coupon and my promoted listing. So I got $23.05 total on that. So that's a good sale. I know that I would not have paid over 2 bucks for hats. I think new hats at the Goodwill where I shop are, um, you know, like 2 or two fifty, And then used hats are a dollar. And I'm thinking that probably came out of the bins. But I'm not 100% sure. I don't remember this hat at all. <laughs> All right, first class. I made some money on the shipping. It's going to California, so it's um four twenty, and I charged six fifty on the shipping. So that's good. I'll make a little bit there too, since they used my coupon. That's always a good thing. <sighs> so yeah, um, I've got about fifty items left that I can work on. Um, and a couple of, a couple of them are hard goods. I'd say about five or six of the items are hard goods. The rest are all clothing. I'm going to send, um, 30 items to my VA. He had asked me when I was going to send him more work. And, uh, I told him if he could get it done by tomorrow, I would send him some today, but then I'm going to be out of town. So then I just can't, um, give him work. And then I can't take this clothing with me this, this trip. So yeah, I don't think, oh yeah. He said he has time, so I am going to, um, when I'm done here, I'm going to eat some lunch, first of all, and then <coughs> I'm um, going to go ahead and photo 30 items for him, and, you know, I, I just do all photos other than I have a sheet of paper. Um, I have it on one of my videos, my uh, virtual assistant piece of paper that I put in, in the photo. Um, so I'll take about four or 500 photos that usually takes me about an hour and a half, sometimes two hours. It just depends on like, if it's a dress that I have to lay out better, if it's just shirts and jeans, then it's very quick. And I don't know what I have over there. You know, I've got the coat to do. That means I take inside pictures of the lining. I, you know, I, I, um, take a picture of the hood. So I probably will take almost 20 to 24 photos on just that coat. So it'll take me a while, but that's all right. It might take me two hours then today. Um, all right. This is a Columbia shirt. It's a real lightweight, kind of more summery shirt, but I'm trying to get things in here. And I'm also really, really, really trying to, um, make my bins trips less expensive and I'm trying really hard to find packable type things like packable shorts you know nylon shorts this is a Columbia it's just a a women's really nice shirt but it's um very lightweight so I paid you know probably what 60 cents at the most on this it's a size medium and this is the kind of stuff that I'm gonna have to grow my store with I um I'm doing the high end. I'm spending to the very edge of my cash flow to get better and better and better stuff. This is not my favorite to do. This only sold for $9 plus shipping, so $17.05. But $17 to the customer, that's a lot. That's a very good sale. To me, though, even though I only spent $0.60, cents, I sold it for 9 So I'm still making money. I'm very happy. But I, I don't like $9 sales. On the other hand, um, cash flow wise, um, I have much more time during the week to list things than I am. It's And it's because I can't just go to Denver, stay four days, spend $1,000. You know, I, I could, but I not without using some of my business credit. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just kind of a challenge to me to build this within itself with the money that's coming in so that's my approach to it if I can um if I had the mother load offered to me and it was like some real unique 
group of clothing that I felt like was worth using my business credit, I would do it. But I feel like, um, you know, I'm just trying to, I, I already have enough to live off of. Now I'm trying to slowly grow it with the cash I have. Um, so anyway, this is five ounces. It's going to Texas. And so it's only $4.20 to send, and I charged $6.75, so I'm also making a couple bucks on the shipping, which is great. Um, the reason I'm doing this, too, on the weight of stuff is it's not just when I go to the bins and the weight. It's the number of items I can get back home. It's also <coughs> when you look at my income on eBay and you look at my gross and then they take out the shipping and the fees and everything. Sometimes mine is upwards of 40% because my shipping is $9.75. You know, or, um, that's not what I pay, but that's what I take in. And then I pay $8.30 on a padded flat rate just over and over and over because I try to find substantial pieces that are going to sell for more. Um, which I think is a great approach. I think if you're spending $6 at the bins for a jacket that sells for $40, I, I think it's irrelevant what you paid up front. Other than it just gets more expensive. And um, so much of my check, like right now if I were to go to my, to my payment or my summary section, um, it's just hard to estimate how much of that money is mine because I have, you know, 10 bucks in shipping just over and over and over again. So um, I'm trying to expand using the $7 profit items. I'm buying to the edge of my cash flow the better stuff because that's really where I want to be. But if you do the math, and I was doing it the other day, if I can buy another three or 400 items a month that are only going to cost me no more than like you know, two to three hundred extra dollars because they're like this and they're very lightweight. They're under a dollar. Um, and then you make like seven bucks on this one. I made probably right around seven dollars if you look at my shipping increase that I got. So, um, you know, say 300 items, that's another two thousand dollars a month to either use for our family or to grow the store just on these type of items. And I easily can type in 300 more items a month. I just can't afford to go spend six dollars on three or four hundred more items per month and then wait for them to turn over so um because i'm already doing that i'm already spending about three to four hundred every time i go to the bins plus my trip expenses so you know if i went to the bins tomorrow if i could get out of here you know it's like a 600 700 800 dollar trip depending on what i find so i'm trying to minimize that and um, stay within my budget and then I do have some flexibility I have two or three hundred extra dollars and I'm trying to spend it on that fast flipping stuff but yet it's lightweight um, and I I may not make my preference on it but I still make seven eight ten dollars on that stuff so that's the plan we'll see how it works um, this is a Woolrich sweater it is a really nice um, flannel it's a thicker flannel it's a plaid wool blend and it is a men's size small so I didn't know how that would do but I I don't know I can't prove it because I haven't kept good statistics but I used gorp core in this again that word that term for the aesthetic and um, it sold via promoted but no coupon use so I got 3101 all together which I think is great you know we're <laughs> I think the whole United States is cold right now, so maybe that's helping, but I know I need to slow down on the flannels in the next month. I know I need to convert to more stuff like that, Columbia, but the price difference is just crazy. I mean, I sold it for 20 plus shipping, and that I sold for $9 plus shipping, so it's just that difference. Um you know, I wish I could just sell jackets and stuff all year long. Now, I know people hike in the summer and they go way up in the mountains. And so I do have flannels in my store all year round, but they do slow down for me. And, and I just don't want to bank on having that. So, yeah, this is $8.30. I charge $9.75 on my um, shipping, so I made about a buck. That at least buys the envelopes and my supplies and my tape. So that's good. Yeah, um, 
we want to be in Denver by Thursday night or Friday. My son can't really stay the night um, unless he has to. So um, he just wants to do like a full one day trip. And I normally get about 40 to 50 inventory that. We do stop. We do go out to dinner. We, you know, we uh, do some fun things too. And he does a bunch of Amazon arbitrage type stuff. And then um, he either drops me off at the Ark if he has some leads on Amazon. Um, he drops me off at some of the better thrifts or um, he comes in and he gets inventory that he's going to give to me and uh, then we do it together and um, I don't know where he's at on having Amazon leads right now. Um, he, he orders a lot of his stuff to, to resell on Amazon. So I don't know what the plan is right now. I just don't want to make a plan. I've just told myself. I'm going to stay home, get all this editing done. If you haven't caught any of my editing videos, I think they're worthwhile. I think that they're showing people how the sit it and forget it thing is okay. That's not my business. It's okay. But it's not my business model. Um, I like this model. I'll show you real quick. This is my goal um, is to have even solds to what's in inventory. And that means that within 90 days, my stuff is selling. Um, and this is my 100% goal here. So right now, I'm a little under because I have 975 active and 842 that are sold. The unsold there are just items that I'm ending and selling similar or getting rid of. I'm just ending them and not putting them back in my store. You can see that if you... Um, watch one of my editing videos. I've done three or four now. I'm going to try to do another one tonight. I'm going to try to edit another 30 to 50 pieces of clothing, but um, I'm afraid to pull off too much out of my store because, um, you know, without adding a lot. So the other day I listed 30 items in one day. I just launched them all. Then I felt comfortable pulling off like 10 or 12 junk items and I'm finding things that aren't listed. So it's not quite like listing, but I have um, stuff that fell off, and it's good stuff. It's really good stuff that I'm glad I'm finding, but I'm doing it piece by piece by piece, one item at a time. I have not done this since COVID. I used to do it once a year, but I helped my mom a lot this last year, and I was just coming off of COVID and a bunch of stuff that I would not purchase again, and I knew my store needed editing. I knew there were some things that I was seeing the box but not coming across it. Um, in the listings and um, so I knew that there were some things that were missing um, or not currently up for sale but um, I just couldn't deal with it last year I was getting ready to and then on January like the week of January 17th I had to just go and help my mom and that was an extensive um, long thing and so it just never got done just could not do it all right, so on this one, I missed a little bit. I charged $13.25 in shipping. It's going to Tennessee, and it's actually $15.53. I don't know why that is because I just, I guess I didn't go to Pirate Ship is why it is, and I'm just not used to the higher shipping that the Postal Service is um, charging. So um, I am going to go to UPS, and it is not a P.O. box I'm shipping to, and i um, it is equal delivery time, if not better. UPS is usually sometimes a little bit faster. So actually this um, is equal or better. So I'm going to ship this UPS and it will only be $12.52. So um, we were talking about that the other day on the group. Do you message the customer and let them know that you're doing this? And I don't. I have never, ever, ever once had a complaint, you know. Hey, you shipped at UPS. I, I chose priority. As, now, I wouldn't down it to parcel post because that is a lot longer shipping time. And I think eBay does watch that. But as long as your items are arriving um, when they should, then um, I don't have a problem with it. And I've never had anybody say anything. Now, if that was a P.O. box, it wouldn't work. So you can't do that. So you do have to watch that. But... I know that by experience because my life is a P.O. box. I obviously have a house and I have a house address for UPS, but if I were to order anything, I never know which I should put in. If it's something small, I tend to put my P.O. box in, and then sometimes my order just won't show up, and they're like, well, um, you know, we, don't, we can't ship to... Um, 
you know, we need your street address. And I'm like, well, you can't ship by the mail with my street address because we don't have home delivery here where I live. And it's this big thing to explain to people. It's like archaic that you live in a place where the mailman doesn't come to your door. Um, UPS and FedEx do, but we have um, no home delivery here where I live. So it, it's just hard to explain. It's just... All right. All right. This is Sanderson King Size Sheets. Let me show you. So we had two of these. I don't remember what he paid. Um, the first one was better. This one had a little tear in the plastic. Um, I'm thinking he got like 30 something for the first one, but these have been sitting. And he said, just, you know, take them off or get them out of here. Um, I want to say he paid five, um, but I'm not sure. I was at the garage sale with him. I just can't remember because he makes deals too. Um, so I'm not sure what he ended up asking or doing. So let me see how I did on the shipping on this thing. All right. Um, sold via promoted. It did not sell with a coupon. So it's $29.47 total, but, um, it sold for $15. Depending on where it's going, we'll see if it costs us shipping or we made money. <coughs> All okay. So, reset my scale here. Okay, so two pounds, um, five ounces. It's going to Kansas, which is great for me. That's close by. So actually, UPS ground would be nine twenty-five. Um, I am. Let's see. I'm already going to UPS, so it's irrelevant. So I'll just do it that way. Um, and then UPS always wants measurements, even though. It's, I know it's not going to affect it, but I put them in. All right, to Kansas we go. So that's good. We, we made like two bucks on the shipping, and that helps a little bit since, since I took such a low offer on that. Because we are splitting this. So, you know, if, if we only sell something for 15 um, by the time we split it, even though I pay the fees, he buys the item, he puts it on the spreadsheet. I've explained, you know, this probably you're, you're like, we know. Um, but if you haven't watched one of my videos, that's how it works. And, um, so this 15 that we're going to split is not that much, but, um, but we do, it's like anything else that $10 adds up when it's the clearance. And, you know, we, we do really well up front on most of the stuff. We are both so waiting for garage sales. I think they're about three months away, um, February, March, April. I think some start in April, and we need to do better at going to estate sales. Like when we go to Denver, you know, it's going to be a Friday. We should be, I need to look up and just see, are there, you know, six or seven estate sales? Um, and we need to do a better job at that because that's kind of like a garage sale. Some of them are overpriced, but most of ours actually do pretty well. But yeah, but actual garage sale season is more like, you know, end of April or May. A lot depends on the weather, too. I mean, people will. If they see a good weather forecast, they'll have one. That's why I'm always thinking in the back of my mind, you know, because um, I could rent the church across the street, which is our church where we go. I could rent it if I was willing to do the takedown and the put up and all that. Um, and then even out of a storage unit when it's you know, not that cold, you know, if I could just bring even a partial load of some of the stuff that I see at the bins that isn't necessarily sellable on eBay, but it's great brands, it's, you know, workwear, it's stuff like that. I know I could make my whole living just supplying my community with um, clothing and stuff that comes out of the hard goods bins. And it's always on the back of my mind, but it would be a very labor-intensive job because I don't have a building. If I had a building and I could 
at least leave, you know, do two weekends in a row and leave it set up. And then I would not have stagnant stuff there either. I would be like, okay, nobody wanted this. It goes to back to where I got it. And I would just make the money. I just know from having church garage sales um, that when we do it, we get so much stuff from the community. And then we put it out for like less than four or five days and we'll easily make $3,000 on just the most common stuff. It's not expensive stuff. It's clothing, pots and pans, candle holders, just junk, you know, craft stuff. And I know that I could do that for myself rather than just for the church. And um, it's always tempting. Um, this is a Circle S Western jacket. It's a size 42R. Um, I ha It's a vintage. I do have long sleeved in the title and then it says read. So it must have a condition issue. So I sold this for $24.11 plus shipping, so $35.89. They did not use promoted or a coupon. So that's a good sale. I do really good on these Circle S things. Um, I have one guy who will buy them from me as a consignment customer. Um, I, can, I give it to him. He pays me just up front. And he does really well in his store with this stuff. But this one had a flaw, so I probably just didn't offer it to him. Okay, 113. Anything Western, I do. If I could just build a Western store, but a lot of the Western snap shirts are not worth more than 10 or 12. So you're getting kind of back into that lower end. Um, this is going to Garden City, Michigan, which is close to my heart. That's where my grandma lived for much, much, much of her life. She died a couple years ago at 92. So she had a very long life. So yeah, I don't see Garden City pop up very much. That is cool. And I still have aunts and family there, cousins. Near Detroit. When I used to go to Detroit as a kid, oh man, it was just a beautiful place. You know, this was before all the car dealerships went out. I'm, um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm 53. So I saw it in its heyday, you know, growing up when I was like 10 years old. I saw it when, you know, everything was beautiful. There was money everywhere. You know, you did not need a college degree back then. And I know you still don't now, but back then you did not need one. You could just go work in the car industry and just make a fortune. And, um, yeah, my aunts and everybody, I mean, there was plenty of wealth to go around. Even if you didn't sell cars or weren't in that, if you were an electrician or if you were anything, you supported the car industry. And, um, when we go back, it's, it's sad. I mean, there's broken out windows. I mean, it's, uh, it's just hard for me to see. Um, but we still go. I got to get my pierogi fill. You know, they have homemade pierogies is like a Michigan thing and you can just buy them by the pound and, I love Michigan, but now that my grandma's gone, we don't go as much. Um, I love my aunts, but, you know, they have their own lives, too, and, and so we just, now that my grandma's gone, I, I think my dad will still go back once a year, so I might try and go with him, um, but yeah. I can't let myself think about all the places where I've had, like, this life and that life. I, I'm not, like, a world traveler. It's just that, you know, my parents were divorced when I was 30, and so then all of a sudden now I have a thing in Colorado, and then my mom moved to Texas when she remarried, so then I had kind of a life in Texas, you know, because I would go a lot, and so I, I feel like I've had homes all over the earth even though they weren't mine and I didn't have to pay for them or take care of them I felt like I had all these landing pads where I was staying for weeks and weeks at a time with different people you know to visit like my dad and his his wife you know they've been married a very long time wonderful person we all get along we all have Christmas together my mom and dad all get along even though there's been a divorce in the family and um then my one brother went to Australia, and he's lived there for 15 years, I want to say. So we see him there. We can't go there a lot. Um, <coughs> excuse me, because obviously it's very expensive. But, you know, um, but it's not expensive because when we go there, we just get, um, we can't really stay with him. He's very minimalist, and he doesn't have a huge house. And then plus, if eight of us come, you know, he can't host us all. So, um, but I have been there and love it. I love Toowoomba. And, um, so I just feel like, you know, um, we don't have the type of family where everybody lives within, you know, an hour of each other. Now I do have a lot of family now who live on the other side of the mountain, my two kids and my mom 
And, um, you know, so it's getting that way. But um, for most of my life, everybody's just kind of lived in all these places and we've traveled to see them, which I like. I love to travel. So it's been kind of a very, I just love, you know, love my life. I love that I've gotten to see a lot of the country and, and I have great memories of like Ohio and Michigan and growing up. And, um, I mean, I love Wyoming, but we don't have tomatoes here. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't care. It's just the truth. Maybe someone who has their own greenhouse out behind their backyard for like a couple of months you can get a real tomato, but they are not Ohio tomatoes. They just aren't that good. I'm sorry. So there are just memories I have of just foods and, you know, we don't have pierogies here. I think people know what they are because you can get them in the frozen section, but no one has a fresh pierogi around here. And, you know, and, and it's just kind of that way. A lot of you probably can relate to that. But here in town in Wyoming, there are also families I see where for generations, literally generations, they, um, everyone settled here, like their kids would come back, you know, their parents had lived here, and I don't know, part of me is really jealous of that, I mean, I feel like it would be nice to just wake up and your entire family just doesn't move, you know, they might travel, it doesn't mean they're ignorant or don't travel or don't go places, it just means that they've just decided, okay, I'm from Wyoming, this is where I live, and part of me is kind of jealous of that, but then I'm also happy that my family has all these experiences, and if I save my money and in a couple months want to go to Australia, I have like a reason and a place to go, and um, so it's kind of neat, I guess. Um, I go back and forth. I don't know. It does make for a crazy life, though, because um, when you're traveling and you're living out of a suitcase, it is fun, but when you're trying to hold down a business where you have to ship, it makes it kind of interesting. So my mom wants to go to Australia this summer to see my brother, and um, they want to meet in New Zealand, and I've never made it to New Zealand. So I'm kind of half torn, you know, if I'm going to try to gear up. I really want to grow the business this year. On the other hand, if I can do a lot of changes and really get it growing, and, and if, if I, as long as I pay cash, I might consider going with her. Um, she's more than able to travel by herself, so she doesn't need me to go. She's 75, and she just gets on that plane, makes her connections. You know, she just she's uh, she doesn't have to have me go, but I would love to go again. Um, this is a Diamond International Lumber hat. It's a vintage snapback. Sorry, I'm stepping on a cord there. Um, it's very clean. It's a foam hat, but it's just, if you've been watching my videos where I'm getting rid of stuff, this was a huge couple of trash bags full of hats that I got a couple summers ago. Might even be going on three now. Um, it was, you know, either COVID was, you know, in the midst of it and they just happened to have this garage sale. I, I vaguely remember wearing a mask or it was when things had started to open up, but everybody was saying they're going to close down again. So I bought some things that I did some bulk purchases that I would not do now. I'm not a hat expert. I don't have a hat store. So this really wasn't a good purchase for me. But with that said, um, they used a 27% off coupon and a promoted listing. So it's $11.08 shipped which is fine with me. I was, I'm was i going through the hats and actually donating most of them or consigning most of them. So this one, I'm glad it sold before I got to it. I would probably have gotten rid of that. So it's actually free money right now. So that's good. It is going to Oklahoma, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. We have a really good friend. Um, my husband went to college in Oklahoma for four years. So we have a really good friend in their family, actually from Broken Arrow. Everybody's from where I love today. Kind of weird. I mean, you know, like Tulsa, Oklahoma is one thing, but Broken Arrow, it's a lot narrower place. It is near Tulsa. And, um, but, you know, that's like actually where our friends live. So that's what's so weird about it. Same with Garden City, Michigan. You know, Detroit's one thing. I mean, tons of us have been to Detroit, but I literally spent just months and months of my life in Garden City, Michigan, like I was saying. So that's what's so strange about today's shipping. It's like, you know, it's like a, it's like a 
you know, back in time memories of all the places I've been. I didn't spend a whole lot of time in Broken Arrow. It's just that my husband did, and then our friends are from there. So I've been there a few times um, to see them over my lifetime. And uh, so that's interesting. All right, first class. I didn't tell you if I made anything on the shipping, so I didn't look at what I charged. This is an older listing, so I probably only charged like five fifty, and I I got charged four eighty eight for shipping it. Um, so I doubt that I made any money on the shipping there. Now I charge like six fifty, six seventy five for anything first class. So then sometimes I do make it. Now this is a sport kilt. A sport kilt. Um, it is a men's, this is a men's, um, kilt, uh, a men's size medium, 100% cotton plaid. So if you ever, ever, ever see these, you know, they can be good. This is a medium. If these were a large or extra large, I think I would have done better. Um, pick off some of that. Yikes. I'm glad I opened that because it's just, uh, it's not like dog hair, but it's just in the, um, in the Velcro. Don't say the word Velcro. It's in the um, hook and loop is the word that I'm looking for. It's in the hook and loop. So let me try to get that out. Let me see if I can scrape it out. Um, if you ever see the construction quilts, I need to look up the name so that when I'm talking about them, you know what I'm talking about. But um, they look like Carhartt pants. It's like that canvas material, but they are construction kilts. And they have pleats normally. They just look like a kilt. And then they have like hammer loops and stuff and pockets. And if you ever see those, those are like 80 to 100 used, let alone what people pay for them new. So keep your eye out. I think I mentioned that the other day. Um, but yeah, this sport kilt, I just grabbed it. I don't even think I did comps. I'm just like, kilts are good. Like I just do so well on kilts. So I probably should have looked it up, but I'm happy with the purchase. Um, actually, let me go tell you here. It's going to New Jersey. Someone's going to rock this quilt there. Um, no coupon and no promoted listing. So that's a full price sale, $24.54 total. So minus my shipping and my fees and all that, of course. All right, this is 12 ounces. <coughs> Make sure I don't add any hair to it here. All right, 12. Going first class 517, and I charged six because I have had this listing for a while. I am up in my shipping. I'm being selfish, but boy, from Wyoming especially, you know. And people have not balked at it. I think it's because I have 100% sell-through rate items. Like, I'm trying. I'm trying to find things that are in great demand so that I can offset, you know, a lot of the stuff that I have to do since I live in Wyoming, especially UPS stuff. I'm off the interstate by 20 miles, so you're going to get charged for anything you buy from me by UPS. So I've realized that I can still sell a few hard goods if I really have to just to offset um, when I can't find the clothing I like, but I have to be prepared that it has to be a really good item for someone to pay up um, for. If the weather was more dependable, you know, I'm out of town so much, I would just put like a four day handling time on my UPS and I would take it like an hour and a half closer to where I, where I'm always shopping and I would, um, you know, cut the shipping for people, but I can't depend on the fact that I'm going on any certain day. There just is no guarantee in my life that I can ever go on a certain day. All right, one more. So I'm actually, I'm happy with today's sales. I mean, I'm down to 970 some items um, and I haven't listed for um, a day and a half. I listed those 30, then I've been editing and relisting things that had dropped off. So as far as eBay's concerned, I did list a little bit each day because these are listings that haven't been up for who knows, a year maybe. Um, so I'm happy with my sales. 
um, you know, a thousand listed items under a thousand listed items, and I've had 10 sales almost every day. So I do try to get good stuff, but I really want to get my store to at least like a revolving 1500 items. I don't really need to manage a really big store. I'm not, I, I only want to do that if I can do it with quality items, put it that way. I'm really happy with my income on just managing a thousand items that rotate really fast. So this is a lucky shirt. I guess I will show it to you. Um, I've had this a while um, and it's a large, but it's really pretty. It's like a viscose, but it is sleeveless. So, you know, um, I might've gotten it like just at the end of summer and then it never sold, but it's really a pretty shirt. Um, they It sold via promoted so that I usually have 10% on my promoted listings. And um, no coupon, so $14.36 total. So the item total itself was $8.56. All right, let's go here. And that is it, guys. Only 10 items. Um, I think I have quite a few awaiting payment, and I need to um, cancel some that are like 10 days ago. They're not going to pay. I need to get in and do that, too. Um and just get them up and listed again because I, I don't think I have anything real high end that someone is like tying up by not paying. Um, this is five ounces, so it's four thirty one, and I charged four ninety nine. That's how long ago it was because I slowly have gone up on my shipping prices four ninety nine. Then I went to like five fifty. Now I'm at six seventy five. So this is um, number two nine two two. So it's like twelve hundred items ago. But anyway, it's a good sale. People say to pick up Lucky Brand in anything large and over. And if it's kind of like a, a, a boho or a peasant or a lagging look thing especially, um, I've heard a lot of people saying they do really good on it. So, well, guys, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for listening to me talk about Michigan. Um, I'm going to... Um, go drop these off, come right back, eat some lunch with my hubby. Then I'm going to um, take photos of the 30 items so that my VA can have those whenever he wants to start working. And then, um, since I won't be listing those until tomorrow, he'll have them done by tomorrow, then I am going to um, edit for the rest of the day. So probably from 3 o'clock till like 9 p.m. I am working late because I'm going to take like a two to three day trip sometime I needed to take a three-day trip like a month ago but it's just there has not been a three-day window where I felt go like going so I might take a two to three day trip this week um so anyway that's why I'm working late because then I get three days off just the source I um I try to have listings scheduled for when I'm sourcing, but I don't try to kill myself and go to a hotel and source, or I mean list, unless I really have to. That does happen where I have to beat a window or beat the snow, and so I've just got to take my listing with me, but I don't want to do that. I think I can get it done between tonight and tomorrow, have three days worth of listings going up, and then that way I'm free to edit, do some paperwork, and travel. All right, guys, thanks for hanging in there. I appreciate you being here with me. Um, it does help me if you don't mind subscribing. Um, and then if you wouldn't mind liking my video or even making a comment, <coughs> excuse me, don't comment about my golf. <laughs> I really am trying to get my voice back. Um, <coughs> oh, goodness. All right, I'm going to go. Bye, guys.